a producer known for uh, a film called No Man's Land, where he won the Oscars award. So Mark, would you also introduce yourself for the audience uh, briefly? Yeah, okay. I'm, uh, so my name is Mark, Mark uh, Bachet, okay. or Basquet for US, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a former DOP, former camera, cameraman. And then I got into production very, very early in my life. My first company I set up, my first company I was 20 years old, uh, yeah, 1974. So for, uh, 24 years old, yeah, 24 years old. And there was, uh, you know, I used to live in America before. So I was a kind of hippie type of guy, you know, with long hair, with uh, <laughs> hashish. <laughs> and uh, when I came back to France, it was very difficult for me to find a, a job. So I was in Cannes Film Festival and I saw a film which was called uh, Misogyny and the uh, Flower Man. Mm -hmm. And I loved that film and I said, why, 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 why? I could be a distributor too. So let's buy the film and then I will release the film mm -hmm. by myself. So that's what we did. But nobody wanted to sell me the film because I had long hair and no money, no, nothing. So I had to hire someone, mm -hmm. a very old man, like 45 years old, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. I was laughing about it, of course. But, and I said, please be the president of my company and we will, we will find an arrangement. But I have to buy that film. So you will say you are the CEO and then I will sign the check, don't worry, mm -hmm. and we buy the film. And then I went to the uh, Rue d'Antibes at Cannes, a uh, uh, rubber stamp done. M my name is Marc, so there was, my company's name was Cine Marc. Mm. Easy. Wow. And then with my rubber stamp and my friend, my new friend, <laughs> I could <laughs> buy the film. And the film was a huge success in France. Wow. So I got rich really, really fast and early in my, in my, in my life. Yeah. So, so then, then I got into production uh, with that and dance, of course. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I would like to go even um, deeper before that. So, so before I, I heard you started as a photographer, and how did you transition into um, be, becoming a producer? Yeah. Um, my father didn't want me to, to make films. He thought that it was not a good way of uh, living, and the, the money wasn't there really, so he said, Run my company. When I'll die, you you'll be the the chief in my company. I said, no, daddy, no, no, I won't make films. So we are good there. So I said, okay, I'm leaving. I'm going to the states. I will run my job over there. So I had my pack, and I went to New York, and uh, I wanted to go to NYU, of course. But I ran out of money, of course, because I didn't have a penny. <laughs> so I became a house painter. And I was advertising in a paper called, at that time, Village Voice, which is not the same thing that now. Now the Village Voice is, some, is a different paper. Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was a very uh, heavy paper. I met a lot of artists there. I met uh, Andy Warhol, of course, all the Nice school, the painters, Armand, and all these people. I was really happy. But the house painting was so difficult, because who's going to ask a French guy to paint the house? I mean. So I went only to the border houses, you know, the, where the cheap work, which was quite difficult, very. But I got the money, and then I, I went to NYU. I could study at NYU, not so long, but enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I became a cameraman. But then I was very good at camera. At that time, I was <clears throat> sportive, young. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so I could make the work of five people from Union. So the union didn't like me at all. And I was uh, hired by a company to uh, shoot the horse races. And I was uh, very fast. I was from the top of the building, down the building, at the, at when the, the horses leave, when they arrive. And I could do that all by myself. And the union hates me. So they broke my camera first, then they broke the camera second, wow. then they broke my head third, and then they put me on the ground and smashed me on the head. And I went to hospital and everything, so I said, okay, <laughs> goodbye America. <laughs> I'll come back in different conditions, not in this one. Right. What experience. Yeah, so I went to Cannes, mm -hmm. I bought that film, and that's how I got into production rather than uh, uh, cameraman. Okay. But I really love to, the, the DOP, director of photography, is such a nice job. It's really fantastic. You know, especially at night with the lights, you can make a sculpture. Like this door, you can make it so different if you want to. Mm -hmm. I really love that job. Mm -hmm. And to look at people, at actors, through the lens of a camera mm -hmm. is something so different. When the woman look at you through the lens, mm -hmm. wow, 
something else, it's another world. It's really different. I loved it, but life led me to some other activities, like production. Production, yeah. So I understand you've traveled around the world and you've filmed a lot of films. Um, so what, what's, what's next? What's next for you in terms of your career? <laughs> Thank you for the question. Yeah. My career is unfortunately behind me rather than in front of me. But I wish I can get a second Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working for that. I was almost there with uh, Lunchbox and with um, um, yeah, some other films, but we'll talk about it. But otherwise, I love talents. I love the people who want, make, who want to make films, even if it's the first film. I, I really love to see them, to meet them, to talk to them. Uh, I, I want to hear what they, they have to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very keen about that. So what we are doing with my friends and my company, uh, we, we are going all around the world and we are going to some spots like called the uh, uh, co-production market or this kind of stuff, you know, where you find these people who want to make a film. So you go to Mumbai, uh, Mami, Mami is a very good festival too, it's a very good spot, to uh, Goa, very good spot too, in, in India. And you go to France, to Paris, Cannes Film Festival, of course, very good spot. And Rotterdam, Rotterdam is very, very good spot. Sarajevo, Sarajevo Cine Link is a very good spot. And you can meet these people. And they can tell you the stories. And, they can, and then, because, you know, if we make the same, if we have the same script, you and me, and if we shoot that script, at the end of the day, there will be two films, not one. It won't be the same. Because we, we have our own eyes, and we look with our head, and our head, my head is not the same than yours. So now I'm still going, mm -hmm. like here, I come here, festival, I say maybe I will find someone, you know, to make a film with, uh, because I'm free, I mean, and, uh, and what makes my fortune is talents. Mm -hmm. So I have to find the talent, I have to make things with talent, so now I'm not so young, so I have to go slower, but I still want to make it. Yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, that goes to, you know, your, your experience at this film festival. Were there any work that you really liked? Were there anything that you noticed from... Did you meet a lot of interesting people, or were you able to...? Yeah, what's good with, with festival, especially when it's a first edition, mm -hmm. is that the, the people are very different. They are not uh, formatted. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are very different. They are themselves. Mm -hmm. They are not, you know, when you go to Cannes Film Festival, you know who you're going to meet. So you know them, you already know their story, you, already, you know everything about them. When you come here, you know nothing. Everybody is a, is a new one. I mean, everybody is a new brother or a new sister. I mean, because that's going to be like this. We, we have to, you know, we have to understand each other, we have to work each other to, to make a good film. So, so that's why I like it. And this festival is really like that, like you have very different personalities. Some people here say they are producer, but they just produce a short film or whatever. I produce so many films that nobody can count it. Mm -hmm. So that makes a difference. That's why it's important to meet together. No, I don't want to teach. I don't want to. No, no. But I like that. I could bring things to 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 people. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this this question goes back to a conversation we had before. So. You mentioned that, uh, I mean, you definitely see a lot of scripts going to you of different people telling you their story. But with so many stories, how do you know which one you want to make a film about? You know? Yeah, I can be more precise than, than, than I was when we talked about it. As a matter of fact, now, well, up to uh, the year 2000, I was producing many uh, French films. With a lot of success, I did a, a film called Doberman with Vincent Cassel and Monica Bellucci which was a very violent film because it was a video game, the beginning of the video game uh, uh, plays. And, uh, and then that film was, was the end of my career with French films. Then I said, well, it's much better to, to do a foreign, uh, foreign language films. And now we are doing only foreign language films. So now, I don't think that we should read uh, other people's scripts. Uh, I'm not really interested by other people's script. I'm interested by other people's stories, but not script. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when they write them, themselves the script, it's more a psychoanalyst mm -hmm. story than their real story. So, so now we're making a, a homemade, homemade script. 
So I meet someone, we talk, uh, oh, that's nice, okay. So we start writing like one page, then three pages. Then if it's good, uh, we go on. It's, uh, then at the end, we can change the author, but we keep the director, of course. The director is the main key of the film, so we keep him, of course, all the way on. Yeah. So, and now I'm not working as hard as I used to, so I'm just making one or two films a year. I'm, I'm not uh, making more films than that. It's already a lot. I see. Yes, that's how you. So, yeah, I mean, how, 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 how do you like Maryland so far? How was a couple of days in Maryland? To be frank with you, there's a lot of Chinese people here. Yes. <laughs> more than the US people, more than Americans. So I love it because yeah. I'm not sure that I, I still love American because, you know, 50 years ago I remember what happened here. So, <laughs> But I, I love Chinese people. I'd yeah. like to, to go in China and, and, and try to, to make a film over there. We have a company with some friends which is called uh, Bridging the Dragon. Wow. And that company is made for uh, making uh, links between European filmmakers, producers, and Chinese filmmakers. But it's so hard because in China, you know, I don't know if it's important to talk about it or not, but in China you cannot talk about what I like. Uh, I, I like to talk about what makes the man makes the man's life difficult, mm -hmm. you know, divorce, uh, uh, feelings, uh, even drugs, or, you know, all this kind of stuff which is co coming to attack the people and which you have to know about it. So it's important to make a film about it to show the people that they are not the only ones to suffer. Mm -hmm. Other people suffer and other people find a solution. That's what is important. And with Chinese, you, we can make only period films, you know. So it's very nice to make a period film, of course, but it's not really what I want to, to make. So, but little by little, I will come to China. Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe in the next life, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. OK, yeah. Um, do you have any final messages for, for the audience and people who are going to see the film festival? Uh, uh, for festivals, really go to festivals, because you don't know what you're going to see. You really don't know what you're going to see. And you will be surprised. And it's so nice to be surprised. I mean, all of a sudden you see, oh, wow, well, I, I didn't know that. Oh, I haven't seen that. And then you see the film, and you meet the film, and you meet the people, and you can talk with the, with the other people of our viewers about the film. So festivals are really, really important. It's the way you can discover uh, new films. And for the filmmakers, it's so important to be in a festival. You know, in our the type of films we're making, which is uh, art film, art house films, uh, we need festivals. We need that our films go to festival, get the A grade, or at least something, a good grade, and then we can release a film. But without festival, we cannot release our films, because the festival make uh, our film. It's a window for, for our film, and it's very important. So please, please, I rely upon new viewers to go to festivals and, 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 and to say, I like it, I don't like it, I don't care. Just go and say what you, what you think. It's not only Facebook or whatever, it's you, yourself, mind, which is important. Yeah, that's about festivals. I, I know you have a very important film that you made in the past, it's called No Man's Land. Could you please tell us more about that film? Yes, okay, with pleasure. I have to go back a little bit to understand what happened. Uh, first, we, we, that was in 1994 that uh, we were producing The Oberman, then in 19, yeah, maybe 92, we produced a film called uh, Before the Rain by Melchior Mocheski. Huge film, so nice, film, so good. We went to Venice, Golden, Golden Palm in Venice, and really nice film. And we were seeing that film, what was going to happen in Yugoslavia. Because all my friends, my partners, are Yugos uh, from ex Yugoslavia. So I, I was really attached to Yugoslavia. And we are saying, if we don't do that, if, there will be a war. If we don't do this, the war will come, and this and this and that. And everything we said happened. Mm. That was, a, yeah, 92. At the end of the war, 97, then we said, okay, how come what we said was not followed by the, the, the powerful people? And the uh, you, uh, ONU, in English, is a UNO, uh, by all these institu world institutions. How come they didn't follow us? How come they didn't smell it? And we made that film, we, said we, we, we met at that time uh, Danny Stanovich, the director of the No Man's Land, and we said, hey, 
let's make a film about uh, the Yugoslavian war and, and what happened and what could be. And, and then he was the leading part of, of it. I mean, he was the one who was writing uh, Danny's. It's really his film. And he said, yes, yes, we could make, you know, like uh, uh, it was a war between Serbian and Croatian and all that on our shoulders, us Bosniak people. So let's make one guy from Bosnia, one guy uh, from uh, Croatia, one guy from Serbia, and they're going to fight together when they went to the same school, when they had the same lovers, when they had the same stories to tell to their parents, and they're exactly the same people living in the same, uh, in the same street. In, in uh, Sarajevo, in, the same, in uh, one street, you have the church, you have the Orthodox church, you have the Catholic church, you have the Muslim church, and you have uh, a Jewish uh, a synagogue. You have all this in, on one street, like 100 meters. Everybody is together. Everybody likes everybody. Everybody gets along with everybody. And then the war comes. Hey, hey, come on. Let's see what's going on. So that's fight between these two people, these two men, by the way. And then they get undressed, and you see them naked. <laughs> and they, they are. Uh, uh, showing the flag, saying, hey, stop, stop the war, stop the war. We are the same people together. Mm -hmm. And that was the success of, uh, of No Man's Land. So we went, uh, then we went to the Oscar. So I don't know if you know the, the, the rules for the Oscar. Uh, uh, they have about 3,000 films to, to watch. Then you get to a final list, not final, you get to a list of nine uh, films shortlist, mm -hmm. then a sixth film shortlist, then a three, uh, three film shortlist. So we went down to the three film shortlist. So we came to LA and hey, we won. <laughs> and we won against, we won against a, a very big film like uh, Amélie Poulain, which is a French film, which was a huge film. We won against it. But also we won against the Indian film called La Cannes, which was a very good film. And the Indians were so, so, so sorry. And we said, okay, we're going to make a film with you. And you see, we'll go to the Oscar under your flag, your Indian flag. So that's why we made Lunchbox. So Lunchbox was a huge success for the art house film, of course, in the foreign language category, of course. It's not a blockbuster like a Hollywood film or like a Bollywood film. It's just an art house film, but very successful art house film. Here in the USA, uh, Lunchbox was uh, on top of the box office for six weeks in the category foreign language film. So they bought, of course, a lot of money and everybody saw it. And it was the first time that an Indian film came out of the country. So uh, we did that film, but unfortunately, the Indian government didn't want to introduce the, the film to, to the Oscar race. So now we have to see for the next one. With Foxtrot, we went, uh, Foxtrot, we, sh we shot in Israel, a German co-production. We went to the uh, nine film shortlist, and then to the six film shortlist. And then the president of USA said, we're going to change the ambassade uh, to uh, Jerusalem. So the whole thing became too political, since it was an Israeli film. So we didn't go to the, uh, to the end of the race, of the Oscar race. But next time. <laughs> but yeah, there will definitely be a next time. Mm -hmm. did, did you expect when you first won the, the award, was it surprising to you when you flew to, to the States? Did you expect that or did you have no idea? You have no idea. Right. And it's, it's so impressive. Right. Like you fly here, then you have to queue in limousine. Uh -huh. And so we had a limousine, uh, which was a huge one. And you have to queue mm -hmm. for hours in the street, in the limousine. Mm -hmm. You have thousands of limousines. Yes. Then you have to go on the red carpet, and the red carpet, they tell you when you can go. So you have to wait again, again, again. And then you get into that theater. Now the theater is a new one. It's a Kodak theater. It's not the, like the other one, but it's even better, I guess. But it's very impressive. And you know what they do? Like, everything is filmed, it's shot, right? So they don't want people, they don't want to see an empty seat. They want all the seats to be full. So if you want to go and make a pee, then you go, but you cannot come back. They would put, yeah, an extra guy, that extra guy paid for that, and they say, hey, extra, come and have a seat. So it's always look like uh, yeah. it's full. Yeah, it's very impressive. And when your name is, is coming up, well, the title of your film mm -hmm. is coming up, and the Oscar is, and yes. the winner is, wow, yes. that you can collapse.
But it really changed your life, right? Yeah, it really changed your life. Since we got the Oscar in 2002, uh, life is different. Uh, much easier to get the, the finance. Uh, um, in, in that panel, I used to say uh, the, the, that the bank said, OK, OK, I cannot say no now because to you, Mark, uh, because uh, you're Oscar winner, but give me one week and we will look at it and if we can say yes or no. Uh, one week later, I had all my friends on board. Uh, so when he called back to say, no, I'm sorry, Mark, he said, no, don't worry, <laughs> it's all done, thanks to you. <laughs> wow. Uh, did, uh, did, you, when you, um, did you, when you first found out you won, did you, how was the celebration like? Did you party or did you just go home and just relax and just say, I did it? Or did you go out and celebrate? Like, you know? Well, in, uh, in Hollywood, yeah, you go out yeah, and okay. celebrate, of course, and when you have the Oscar, yeah. well, if you, I mean, all the doors are open, oh, wow. <laughs> that, there you can celebrate a lot. But the funny thing in the USA, you cannot smoke inside, right? In yes. the US, and you cannot uh, drink alcohol outside. Yes. So, you know, if you want to smoke and drink alcohol, you have to stand one foot, one foot outside and one foot oh. inside. So then you can drink and <laughs> smoke. I didn't know that, but wow, I learned something. <laughs> so we spent the night with my friends with two legs <laughs> wow. apart. Well, I'm living here this many years, I still didn't know that. But yeah, that's something very cool. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for your story. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you. Yeah.